Hi everyone, my name is Mandy Xia. I'm a PhD student at Cornell University. Today, I'm going to talk about our work, Gaussian product sampling for rendering layered materials. This is joint work with Bruce Waller, Christoph Harry, and Steve Marshner. This work was accepted to CGF in 2019. It has been a while since then. I'm hoping this presentation could give a clear description of our work and share our takeaway looking back in time. Layering increases the diversity and complexity of surface appearance, and most materials require multiple components to model their appearance. For instance, a car finish made by coating a metal surface with a primer, then a base coat, then a clear coat. Graphics researchers have proposed different solutions to realistically render layered materials. Among them, Layer Lab converts BSDFs to a tabulated representation and computes the layer BSDF numerically. It is accurate and general, but requires a precomputation that depends on layer parameters. Belcore introduced an interactive rendering solution that composes layers by estimating the statistics of the combined BSDF and representing the result as a sum of GGX slopes. This is an efficient but approximate solution. Guo et al. propose a general, accurate, and pre-computation-free method that uses Monte Carlo integration to estimate the value of the layered BSDFs. We also concurrently and independently developed the Monte Carlo layering framework based on the position-free assumption. However, their work came out a little bit earlier than ours. One drawback of their work is speed. On top of the Monte Carlo layering framework, we also introduced two new sampling strategies that are based on a parameterized Gaussian representation of the single layer BSDF. Our method substantially reduces variance in rendering isotropic layer surfaces compared to Guo's method. Let me first talk about the Monte Carlo layering framework. We assume that the layers are thin enough so we can ignore the horizontal displacement of the exiting point relative to the incident point. In other words, we model the layered stack using one BSDF. This position-free assumption is a powerful assumption, and with this, we can write out the layer BSDF evaluation as integration over only directions but not positions. Given all the single layer BSDFs, our job is to compute the total BSDF of the layer stack. This BSDF is the sum over all possible paths arriving at direction omega i and traveling through the layers and exiting in direction omega o. On this slide, we draw a two-layer material incident from above the layer as an example. The reflection contribution is the sum of the first layer BRDF and the contribution where the light transmits through the first layer from above reflects from the second layer and transmits through the first layer back into the air. And in theory, this sum goes on and the interreflection can keep increasing its length. The transmission contribution is the sum of transmission twice through the layers and longer paths where there are more interreflections between the two layers. We use the multi-index f to denote the BSDF for a particular path type that visit the layers in the sequence specified in the subscript. These multi-index Fs are integrations over possible path directions inside the layer stack. Let's take a closer look at F010. It equals to the product of three BSDF integrated over the projected solely angle measure corresponding to the inner directions psi1 and psi2. As the path length increases, the integration dimension also increases. It is challenging to accurately and efficiently evaluate these integrals. We apply the Monte Carlo integration method used in the global renderer to this local layer evaluation problem. The remaining problem is what sampling strategy to use to conduct this Monte Carlo integration or how to import and sample the inner paths wisely in order to reduce variance and render efficiently. 
One simple but not very effective strategy for sampling the interior directions in a layered material is the forward sampling strategy, where we sample the first inner direction psi1 using the first layer sampling function given incident direction omega i, and then sample the inner direction psi2 using the second layer sampling function. If we use p to denote the PDF and use g to denote the estimator, then we can write out the estimator in this case that equals to the product of 3 BSDF divided by 2 PDF values. We assume that the single layer BSDF sampling function is known and is a good important sampling function. This means that the ratio between the BSDF value and the PDF value is nearly a constant, and this constant is the directional albedo. Turning what I just said into equations, here I use W to denote the ratio of BSDF to PDF and capital F to denote directional albedo. Using forward sampling, we will eventually convert to the true solution. However, we observe that each sample direction considers only one BSDF and incident direction, and there is one BSDF evaluation left in the estimator. In this case, when the top layer roughness is small, the F0 evaluation left in the estimator is going to have large variance and making this strategy not effective one. In Guo et al.'s work, they propose to use the bidirectional method to improve the efficiency of forward sampling. In the F010 case, the bidirectional method essentially performs multiple important sampling on the three strategies drawn on this slide. However, this method can still exhibit high variance when all the individual estimators are poor. To see this, let's write out the individual estimators that MIS is performed on. The first strategy is the same as the forward sampling strategy we just discussed. The second strategy samples the two inner directions both using the first layer sampling function, that is, sample psi y given omega i and sample psi 2 given omega o. Similarly, we can write out the estimator and again there is one BSDF evaluation left. In this case, when the bottom roughness is small, this BSDF evaluation can introduce large variance. Lastly, we have the third sampling strategy that sequentially sampled the inner directions starting from omega o. Similar to the first strategy, when the top layer roughness is small, BSDF evaluation left in the estimator can introduce large variance. This analysis motivates us to develop new sampling strategies that can improve the efficiency of the bidirectional method. Our first sampling strategy is called pair product sampling, and the key idea is to construct important sample distributions based on the product of two adjacent layers BSDFs. Again, taking F010 as an example, using this method we have two sampling choices. One is to sample psi1 given omega i first using first layer sampling function, then sample psi2 according to a distribution that approximates the product of the first layer and the second layer BSDFs. The second choice is to sample psi2 given omega o using a first layer sampling function, then sample psi1 according to the product distribution. We can further MIS the two choices. Writing out the estimator helps us see more clearly how this strategy behaves. Due to symmetry, we can just look at the case where we sample psi2 from the pair product sampling distribution, and the other case follows a similar analysis. Let's assume that we have created a good pair product sampling distribution and P10 is its PDF. Later in the talk, I will explain how we actually construct such a function. This means that the PSDF pair to PDF ratio W10 is closely matching the normalization factor F10. As a result, the pair product estimator replaces the variance of sampling the individual BSDFs with the variance of sampling their combination, which is smoother. The pair product sampling can be further improved. We observe that the normalization factor F 
remains in the product sampling procedure is still a function of site 1, which is a previously chosen random direction in the path. This normalization factor can be recognized as the composition of two adjacent BSDFs along the path. In essence, the pair product sampling strategy is simply the sequential strategy applied to a path one event shorter. To further reduce the variance, we developed the second new sampling method, multiple product sampling. This method further improves on the pair product sampling and construct sampling distributions for the product of more than two sequential BSDFs. In the F010 evaluation example, we would like to have a distribution P010 so that the sampling weight approximates F010, although in general it is impossible to compute F010, we achieve an approximation by chaining single layer BSDF's approximation together. Before going into more details about how to construct sampling functions, let's take a look at one result. This figure shows an equal time comparison between the forward sampling strategy Gauss bidirectional sampling strategy and our two new product sampling strategies. Our pair product sampling method achieves 5.4x and 1.8x reduction in room mean square error compared to the forward sampling method and the bidirectional method. Our multiple product sampling ob obtains 8.2x and 2.8x reduction in room mean square error compared to the forward sampling and the bidirectional method. The effectiveness of our pair product and multiple product sampling strategies rely on a good approximation to the BSDF pair or chain, and we can use it to better important sample layer BSDF. In the following, I will first motivate the Gaussian representation and explain how we construct sampling distributions and perform sampling using the Gaussian representation. In general, if given two layer BSDFs FJ and FK, pair product sampling requires working with an expression FJ times FK with corresponding directions. To efficiently sample this product, we would like to represent the BSDF functions FJ and FK with one argument fixed, which is then a 2D function using a type of distribution that is easy to sample from, preserved under multiplication, and can fit various BSDFs well. With these considerations, we choose bivariate Gaussian mixtures to approximate surface BSDFs. To be more explicit, layer J's BSDF FJ with one direction omega fixed is approximated as a sum of n number of 2D Gaussians. Sidebar here is the 2D variable. Gamma represents Gaussian's parameters, including its mean covariance and the weight in the Gaussian mixture. These Gaussian parameters change as the direction omega changes, as well as when the index of refraction and roughness of the layer change. One key idea here is that we fit Gaussian's parameters gamma as an explicit function of direction omega and the material variables. This allows us to encapsulate information of one kind of BSDF in this parameterized Gaussian present representation, so only one time pre computation is needed per BSDF type. We selected outgoing direction slope space for the domain of 2D Gaussian. This slide illustrates how the outgoing direction psi maps to its slope space projection psi bar, which essentially divides the vector by its z component. Common BSDFs are easy to fit in this domain. A microfacet model with Beckman slope distribution can be well approximated using a single Gaussian, and with the GGX slope distribution can be well approximated using two Gaussians. We refer to the paper for more details of the representation and fitting. Now let's see how we apply this Gaussian representation when conduct pair product sampling. We first sample the direction psi1 using the single layer sampling function. Then when it comes to sample direction psi2, we first compute the 2D Gaussian that approximates BSDF slice f1 with one argument fixed. 
Then we compute the 2D Gaussian that approximates BSDF slice F0 with one argument fixed. Given Gaussian fits for the two BSDFs, we can compute their product, which is another Gaussian, and then draw samples from it. In this way, we achieve our goal that psi2 is sampled from a distribution that is approximately a por proportional to the product of a BSDF pair. In this figure, the top row shows a 2D BTDF slice, a 2D BRDF slice, and their product. The bottom row shows the two corresponding slices of the parametrized Gaussian feeding and their product. Note that the product of the two BSDFs can be approximated much better by the product of the two Gaussians than it is by either of the individual BSDFs. I will now describe how to use Gaussian representation to conduct multi-product sampling. The most useful version of the multi-product method samples two directions from a product of three BSDFs in the case of single component Gaussians. In this case, we construct a 4D Gaussian model and sample two directions jointly in a single operation. Coming back to the F010 example, the first step is to compute two 2D Gaussians that are approximations to F0 given omega i and F0 given omega o, respectively. Next, we build a local 4D Gaussian approximation to the middle BSDF function around a chosen expansion point based on the same parameterized 2D Gaussian distribution. We construct the local 4D Gaussian using the derivative information from the parameterized Gaussian fitting. Finally, we chain this local approximation together with the two 2D Gaussians and sample two inner directions, psi1 and psi2. Using the multi-product sampling method, we sample according to a chain of three BSDFs directly. Now I will show some results that demonstrate the efficiency of our method. In this example, we have a clear-coded red sphere. Our pair product sampling method produces a clean render, while the forward path tracing method is still far from convergence giving the same number of samples per pixel. This figure compares Gauss bidirectional method and our pair product sampling method in an equal time manner. All the objects in the scene are characterized using microfacet BSDF layers. The room in square error of each color box is reported. Our method reduces room in square error by 1.6x to 3.3x on the color boxes. This thing contains a double transmissive layer material in the framed area with textured albedo and roughness. The left image is rendered using Guo et al.'s bidirectional method, and the right image uses our pair product sampling method. The red box shows the zoom area and it also used to calculate room in square error. Our method obtains 5x reduction in room in square error. On this slide, the comparison is similar to the previous one, except that here we have three transmissive layers. We also observe significant reduction in room in square error on the red box. This slide shows a double texture layer car scene rendered using our pair product sampling strategy. This example demonstrates our model is able to handle texture materials. Each layer can have independent albedo roughness and index of refraction maps. Our parameterized Gaussian representation incorporates material properties and only a one-time precomputation is required for one type of BSDF. In conclusion, in this paper, we present a Monte Carlo layering framework with two new product sampling strategies to efficiently render isotropic layered surfaces. The precision-free assumption allows us to write layer BSDF as integration of inner directions only, but not positions. Our new sampling methods reduce stochastic layer evaluation variance by combining multiple BSDFs together and generating samples from distributions are more proportional to the BSDF chain. Our new sampling methods are based on a novel and compact parameterized Gaussian BSDF representation.
One interesting idea of our work is that we can sample multi-event paths directly instead of being stuck in the usual situation of always sampling events independently. In this work, we only show comparisons on isotropic surfaces, but we can integrate Guo et al.'s work to handle anisotropic and volume layers. In order to apply our sampling strategies to an isotropic and volume layers, we need to extend the Gaussian representation. We observed that multiple product sampling only improves convergence when we sample three BSDFs at a time, which might be due to increasing approximation error as the chain grows. In practice, implementing Guo et al.'s method is more general and without any precomputation. But we still hope this work shows you that there could be better ways to do sampling in the Monte Carlo layering framework, and hopefully this could inspire future work to further improve the efficiency of Monte Carlo layering methods. Thank you.